All right, so I had this little application I've been working on as a side project, and I kind of just wanted to do a little bit of refactoring today. So if you're kind of interested in learning more about how do you clean code up, then maybe stick around and watch this video. But hopefully you don't need to know too much context about this project to kind of know what I'm doing. So one thing I noticed, I'm using something called TRPC, which is a kind of like a communication layer between your front end and your back end. And if I look at my TRPC router, which I believe is here. Uh, um, let's just look through here and see if there's ways that we can potentially clean this up a little bit. Um, and I'm sure there is. I'm still kind of new to this. And uh, yeah. Anyway, so let's look at the let's look at the images router. So one thing that you can do on this application is you can upload an image, like so. And that's going to upload to S3 and then display it. In fact, I'm not sure why that didn't work. Do I have a bug in my code? Let me refresh the page. There should have been two that popped up, but I'm not sure if maybe my... Oh, I didn't click upload. There we go. All right, so the image pops up here. And you can also remove this image if you want. So let's look at those endpoints. So I have an images router, which is what the front end is calling when I do that. And let's look at this. And let's see if there's ways that we can clean this up. So the first thing about making maintainable clean code is to try to find ways to remove duplicate logic. So these endpoints, if you notice here, we check if there's a session and then we get like a user ID. This code looks very similar, in fact, identical to this code. And I think I do it again down here, okay? So that is a good sign that we need to refactor this code and dry it up. Right? Don't repeat yourself. Find ways to take duplicate logic that you're doing in different places and abstract it away. Right? So this, <clears throat> this is a good example of dry and wet as well. Wet is another acronym for write everything twice. Well, I've wrote it once here. I've wrote it twice here. I've wrote it three times. I think it's time to refactor this. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out, I think there is a dot middleware function and I don't remember how to use this, so I'm going to have to go to the docs. But basically, we want to kind of run some code. In fact, let's just go to trpc middleware. Sometimes you just have to go to the docs and learn. So let's go to here. There is a middleware function. This is how they call it. Let's just try to copy what they're doing and break it down and analyze it. So we're going to do something similar. Instead of checking if the user is admin, we want to check to make sure that there is a context in a session. OK, so we're going to go ahead and do this. And this says you must be logged in. So at this point, everything that's in this router, I think I could just basically delete that. Um, I could delete this. And then I could delete this. Now, because I'm using TypeScript, there is an issue where like now it doesn't think that this is defined, but I know it's defined. So technically I could put an exclamation mark here or something, but I'll just put question marks because I think that's going to be better. Uh, you know, I'm going to say session is equal to context.session and I'm just going to put the exclamation mark because why not? Let's just do that. Let's clean up this code just a little bit. Do the same thing. I might just turn off that linter rule because I think using the exclamation mark is kind of important. OK, so we've cleaned that up. Um, another thing, let's see if there's a way that we can basically, I don't know if we need to get the user ID set up, but what we could potentially do is maybe we can uh, like just attach the user ID directly here instead of having to do this. Or like, I, I wish there's a way to like tell the middleware. I'm not good with TypeScript, I'll be honest. but. Just tell the middleware that, yes, when this thing's done, context will be modified and it'll look a little bit different. So, I mean, we can kind of look through this and see, like, what's up. Context swapping. A middleware can replace the router's context and downstream procedures will receive the new context value. So it looks like you can do something like this, where you can actually extend the context. Maybe that'll make sense. Like maybe we should do that instead of having to do these exclamation marks. Like maybe we can actually say user ID is equal to context session dot user ID. So that we only have to do it in one place. But I haven't done this before, so let's see if this actually helps. So context, 
if I look at this, now it actually has a user ID to find on it because it's doing like inference, TypeScript inference. So now I could just do context.userID like that. And I think that's all we have to do, all right? So now we actually can reduce this code a little bit better. We have this user ID that we know is gonna be defined. We don't need to like grab it everywhere. So that is, I think, cleaner code, honestly. Try that. Yeah, so let's actually test our code, make sure we didn't break anything. Everything related to images should be in this middleware. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another image of this guy upload, make sure this still works. It does, delete it, everything still works. So we have successfully refactored our code away um, into a middleware function. Um, now let's look at some other folders and files because I believe we're doing the same logic in different places. So again, we have this check the CF context is not defined and throw an error, and then we're getting the user ID. So at this point, we should probably take this middleware and I'm gonna just make a new like helper somewhere. I guess I can just put it here and call it like utils. And I'm going to say is logged in middleware. So this is kind of similar to like next or whatever, where you have like middleware functions. But I'm going to say export const is logged in middleware is equal to a function like this. And I think, what can we do here? This thing takes in, what does it take in? middleware function. I think I have to do middleware function maybe. Let's go back to the docs. Maybe there's an easy way to abstract this away. Um, I'm so bad at TypeScript. Like I'm still trying to learn. So like sometimes I don't understand like how I can type certain things. Um, so if I hover over this middleware, this thing is a type of, I don't know, what is it a type of? Router, middleware function, and then it takes in this stuff. Um, I mean, it says it just needs ops. So I mean, I, I probably have to type it here. T e input context, T context, and T meta. I don't really know what these things are, to be honest with you. Like, maybe for right now, I'll just put any. This is this is obviously not the way you want to do it. Anyway, let's just see if this will work. If not, then I'll have to just take a defeat and go to a Discord and ask for help that with people who are better with TRPC and with TypeScript. So anyway, I'm abstracting this whole middleware away. So hopefully that we can go to the images router and we can actually just import that directly like this. So if I were to do that, um, it, it'll work, but the issue is now I've lost my TypeScript, uh, my TypeScript stuff. So I'd have to go and figure out how to actually get this working. And I do want to say this will even still work after I've done that change. I don't want to upload a movie. I want to upload this person. So click upload. It still works, but I do get a bunch of TypeScript errors. So I don't know if it's actually compiling. I mean, it looks like it's compiling and stuff, but yeah, I, let's just go ahead and do that same approach for all of our stuff. And at some point I'll go and ask for help. So same thing here, uh, I believe. Oh wait, yeah, that's what we had to do. Just put the middleware in. But let's do the same thing for some of these other routers. So like everything that's related to images, I feel like it has to be behind a middleware function. Everything behind a checkout. Let's see, this needs a session and a user ID. And then this one doesn't. So this one, I could just put the middleware here and verify that the user is logged in. And then I could just say context user ID. Okay, so that should allow me to kind of sign up with Stripe and everything that comes after the middleware will be, you know, set up that way. And let's do the same thing with the bookmarks. So in order to get a bookmark, unbookmark something and bookmark, you have to be logged in for all of these, right? So let's just go ahead and we're gonna do the same middleware. I just wanna double check. I'm gonna put this right here. And then we should have access to the user ID. So context user ID. Go ahead and auto import that. And we're gonna go ahead and just delete some of the stuff. 
delete that as well. User ID could be context at user ID. All right, so <clears throat> let, I think, well, let's check this real quick too. So is premium, if you're not logged in, this one's different, like this one's fine. We don't need to be logged in to check if you're premium. But let's go back to the app and like click around, make sure we didn't break anything. Like, can we still bookmark stuff? And I'm gonna click on bookmark. It looks like we can. And we still go and remove images. Looks like we can. So the, the errors I'm getting in my console are really just related to TypeScript errors, which I need to find a way to like fix that stuff. And what it's gonna boil down to is basically taking this middleware, finding a way to type this to tell it to tell TypeScript that this is a TRPC middleware function and it returns some type of context. But I kind of suck at TypeScript, so I'll have to figure that out down the road. But yeah, if you, um, let's see if there's anything else we can kind of refactor. So yeah, in this images router, I have this bucket hard coded. So again, we're going to apply the dry principle. We have this coded twice, which is not good. So we want to kind of go up here maybe and say bucket name and at least put that in a variable that's not duplicated twice. So this is, you know, just a simple little change, but it does make the code easier to refactor. And you can actually take this a step further. If you were to think, what if my system needs to change the bucket location? Do I want to have to redeploy everything just to dynamically change where it's storing images? Or should this actually come from like an environment variable called like bucket name? or image storage S3 bucket. All right, so that is an approach you can do. Like if I wanted this thing to be configurable in the future, you can do that. This might be getting into the realm of over-engineering because you know, we're kind of over-optimizing for something that we don't even know if we need. But it's usually good to configure things like this to be coming from the environment variable just in case you ever need to change what bucket you're storing stuff in. Um, let's keep looking through this. Is there anything else that is like super um, hacky or could be refactored or is duplicate logic? Look at this promise stuff. Let's see if this thing looks like it's getting out of hand. Oh, this has a bucket name here. So bucket name. Uh, these things could also be configured from the command line or from environment variables if you wanted to. I think it's fine just to keep them as is and just do a redeploy. Usually deploying stuff is super easy and cheap to do. So it's like, don't, don't add too many configurations to your app unless you truly know that they're going to be needing to change often, in my opinion. But if it's something that you can just keep hard coded and change it, like maybe you want to kind of abstract this away and call this like expire time is 30. Or I could do like document or uh, I'll say upload expire time. No, upload time window. Uploading time limit. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes when I name stuff, I jump around. Uploading time limit. Like, maybe this is more understandable than what I was doing before. And this one could be called, like, upload max file size. Okay, I could go up here and say upload max file size is equal to that. So now, like, everything that's configurable is at the very top of this file and it makes it a little bit easier. Again, you could probably make a single config file and have these things imported from either environment variables or just hard coded like this. It just makes it easier than I have to dive through the code base just to change a quick little configuration. Let's say someone tries to, a lot of users keep uploading files and they keep timing out because a lot of people are trying to upload like high resolution images. Well, maybe I just want to come in here and just bump this up to two megabytes. It makes it really easy to just do that and find that code. But yeah, is there anything else that uh, we can kind of refactor here? I think this code is a lot cleaner than it used to be. So I think we've we've made some progress. Anyway, I think that's all I want to show you in this video is just, you know, do a quick little refactor session, show you my thought process of how I clean up some code and just kind of force myself to go through here and clean up this code base. But if you have any uh, any questions about what I did, leave a comment. Otherwise, have a good day and happy coding.